Hi guys, it's Coach Joe Mitchell again with Performance One Advanced Sports Training. We get asked a lot of questions about what age is an appropriate starting point for their young athlete. We'll get calls from parents that have 10 year olds, 12 year olds, 13 year olds. Some say, hey, I don't want to start him until he's at least a freshman in high school. Because the biggest question that always gets presented to us, will strength training, resistance training, lifting heavier weights stunt the athlete's growth? And the answer to that is no. Several years ago, I was asked by a pediatrician from Phoenix Children's Hospital, Dr. Richardson. He interviewed me for a paper that he was doing. He said, hey, you know, and he was a pediatrician for a very, very long period of time. And he said, hey, I looked over the data from our end. And he, he said that he realized that the data was very inconclusive, that there was no actual research that showed children had stunted their growth from resistance training. Okay? That in reality, there's more kids that get their growth stunted from uh, malnourishment, uh, poor nutrition, not eating en enough of the essential fats, protein, and vitamins, than there were from kids having injuries from that. Now, I'm not saying there was never a kid that ever got hurt if he dropped a bar or something and it hurt his wrist or on a growth plate or something like that, but it's rare. Okay? The caveat to that is being under the, the right supervision of a qualified coach. Okay, that can actually teach them technique, which is huge, number one. But the second most important thing is that they understand load management. Okay? They understand what that means is the sets, the rep, the progression of weights that are appropriate for a kid at that particular age. I'm a perfect example of that. When I was younger, I was a big kid. So they're like, hey, Joe can handle a lot of weight. You know, he's a big kid. And that, that is always the right answer. And we've had kids that have come in here after they've had injuries into their primary school's program because the coach really wasn't, hey, we have 50 pounds is good this week. Next week he goes to 100. In four weeks he should be at 500 pounds. Like it doesn't work that way. A linear progression model does not necessarily work, okay, with younger kids. Okay, it's going to look like this. Okay, it's going to be a wave, a wave approach. So you have to understand how kids' bodies develop, one, Okay, the, the proper biomechanical technique of that movement, a squat, a clean, okay, a deadlift. The muscles that are involved in that movement, <clears throat> how to progress and build those muscles with that primary movement, but also with accessory exercise. And then just time, developing what we call muscular density. Some of it can't be rushed. Some of it is going to take months. Some of it is going to take years. And they have to have a long-term plan. And unfortunately, and I'm going to, you know, take some shit for this, but it's okay. There's a lot of PE strength conditioning coaches that don't understand this because they didn't learn it. Teacher, but they didn't necessarily understand strength training loading with adolescents and prepubescent athletes. Okay. In other countries, in the old Soviet union, <clears throat> in uh, Europe in general, they've done more research on that here. I've studied a lot of that. I studied that, that, that Eastern European model. I've studied what they've done in other countries and I've applied it here. So we have a better, a very, high success rate of younger kids being able to, to apply resistance training with very, very, very few injuries. People say, oh, it's going to stunt their growth and all this other stuff again. I'm the tallest person in my family and I started lifting weights at 12 years old. Especially with young boys, it can actually stimulate growth hormone release and testosterone development. It's going to help develop their bones at a younger age that, think of it like a tree. You stake a tree on either side, okay? Why you're doing that? To help the tree grow vertical. Well, having more bone density can keep that kid more upright. You see all these kids when they're growing up, they're like this, okay? Instead of now having a good posture and the bone density to hold them up, then the muscles around there can be supported through that proper strength training from a bone density standpoint and a muscular development standpoint. So those are things that we can do here. But again, being under the right supervision, okay? You're, you're being in, in, uh, under some kid that's like college intern or he doesn't really know or they don't have a strong background in youth strength and development, then you could run into problems. Then I wouldn't put my kid into a program like that. I'd be wary about my high school program because they're just like, yeah, just do whatever you want. There's no organization. There's no loading. There's no data collection. And again, not every kid is going to develop at the same rate. Just like in schools, you have the high readers, the middle readers, and you got the low readers. In a weight room, we have the same thing, okay? You have your high progressors, you have your medium progressors, and then you have your low developers, okay? They just take more time. You can't give the low developers the advanced kids program, okay? Just like you can't give the low readers the advanced kids reading. They're gonna get discouraged, they're not gonna be able to get it. 
The same thing with the advanced readers. You can't always give them the low kid stuff. They're going to get bored. So you have to find that balance. At our program here, we evaluate the kids and then we put them into the program that's best going to suit their needs. In some cases, it may be a program that's just slower, okay? A longer term development program, okay? They need more time. But if it's monitored over weeks, over months, and manage that, the sets and reps, okay? That percentage of, of, of intensity, meaning how heavy a weight they're gonna go. Over time, then we can see those results in a safe manner. They're eating properly, they're getting the sleep that we talk about, they're getting the hydration we talked about, they're gonna see that rate of development faster, okay? They're not gonna have these holes or the, these pitfalls of development because again, it's, you go into a, some high school program or you go into some other programs and it's like guesswork. Oh, you know, this is the workout of the day and uh, today we're going to do this and I just want to kill the kid. You know what I mean? They're going to put some workout on there that's going to kill the kid. We're going to do 400 meter lap with a 45 pound plate over our head and we're going to lunge like crazy. And then by the way, we're going to do stairs and then we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And it's like, yeah, you want to kill a kid? Great. Awesome. But did that actually help him in the bigger picture? Understanding load, understanding the management, understanding the long-term development of that athlete is more critical. Okay, it's safer. Okay, you can do it. I'm not saying we don't push things, but within a reason. Within reason to understand that. You have to have that fundamental understanding. Okay, at the same time, it can't all just be about numbers. I've, been, I've ran into a lot of coaches that are like, er, 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 I'm a robot and I don't understand analytics. You have to understand the human body, it's an organism, and how athletes, even young athletes, handle stress, stress of training, the stress of the volume. And you have to look. You may write out this 12-week program thinking this is going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread and realize week four into it, they can't handle this. It's too much, okay? But you are so dogmatic about I've already written 12 weeks out through hell or high water, I have to stick with it. Bullshit, okay? Look at what's going on. Why are you going to kill the kids for the next eight weeks when you realize it's not working? Or the flip side. It's so easy for the kids that they're getting bored, that they're now, their, their progress is getting stat, uh, stagnant because it's not stimulating enough, okay? Because you don't, haven't developed what we call the coach's eye of how to analyze the data, how to look at your athlete and see are they responding, okay? That's where asking questions. How are you doing? Looking at their technique, looking how they're responding, how they're interacting with their peers during the training session. And they're like this, oh my goodness, coach is trying to kill me. And it's, oh, one kid, no big deal. But now it's everybody's like that, wait a minute, what am I doing? Okay? I'm not saying one bad day if you see it repeatedly. These are, is part of the art of coaching, is the feel of the structured program along with your kids. What we could do in Arizona, you may not be able to do in Florida. You may not be able to do in Texas. They may be able to do more in some of those areas than we can do based off of time, based off of the type of athletes that we're getting. So you have to know what works for you in your little world. When we're in here, we get kids from all over, but we're still seeing the same kind of ballpark kids that in Arizona, what we can deal with. You have to learn that as a coach. That's why our program is unique. We're studying not only the science, but we're, the, the, we're studying the science of human behavior and how these kids adapt to the training. And I've been doing this over 20, almost 25 years. And because I've been doing that so long, we, we know. I know and I develop a protocol that helps these kids out so that we don't have these pitfalls where the parents are going, Man, I'm scared to put my kid into a program with somebody else. They're 10 years old or 12 years old. Sometimes they go, oh, they just need speed training. And I said, no, actually they need just general strength training. They don't need to be this specialized in this, this specialized in this. They need to be well-rounded. We need to make them strong, athletic, and coordinated, okay? So we'll actually bring a kid in that will come in for speed training. We'll evaluate them and say, hey, they actually need some just basic body control. We had a girl, in a particular example, she was undersized. She came in, she was a softball catcher. Dad's like, I just want speed training. I said, well, let's, let's, we'll add a little bit of this, a little bit of that in there. She added strength training. She added speed work in there as well. Next thing you know, she's stealing bases like crazy, but then she was hitting for power, even though she was one of the smallest people on the team. People thought she was a slapper. She was going to slap at the ball and run. Next thing you know, she's hitting it over their heads. And she made her, her varsity team as a true freshman. Okay? And then she started all four years as a catcher. And everyone was like, no way. It's never going to happen. Okay? But we worked with her in that. We evaluated what she needed. Sorry, parents. You don't always know what's the best for the kid. We will evaluate them. We will let you know how to guide that kid, how to put them, and put him in the best, or she, in the best possible situation to succeed base training, base strength, working on fundamentals. And once they can progress, we move in a, in a tier system to get them better. 
Each year they're in our program. What they're doing in year one, day one, month one, is not necessarily what they're gonna be doing in year four. Some fundamentals, yes, but it's gonna be at a different capacity, a different understanding, okay? A higher expectation when they get higher, when they get to that more advanced level. And yes, the exercises get more complex and more detailed, but then we have a body of work because we kept the data going on them. But we also said, hey, we're writing notes on that data. That's a problem a lot of these coaches don't do. One, because they're in a high school program, they put 85 kids in a strength and conditioning class and go, go at it, Bob, let's go, go do something. And he's just going, oh my God, what am I supposed to do? I just heard of a coach trying to put like tablets all over his weight room. I'm going, what the frig? These kids are already freaking glued to freaking tablets enough as it is. You're gonna add more in the weight room thinking that's gonna be a better situation? No, I don't know, maybe coach. I don't know, maybe do that. Maybe pull these kids aside and set up a program that now, not only that you're teaching them, but you're teaching them how to be self-sufficient and understanding and accountability. I don't know, where'd that go? Instead of making them all robots and they're just looking at the, the iPad on what they're supposed to do next. It's not the answer all the ways. Don't run from the, that opportunity to coach, to learn your athletes, learn the data, collect the data. If that's not for you, maybe this is not the profession for you, okay? It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of dedication on our end to do that, but the end result is better. The end result is better for that athlete and that team coach when they get that athlete. If you have any more questions about strength and conditioning, youth athletic development, Olympic weightlifting, don't hesitate to reach out. Leave a comment in the box. We're always willing to listen and hear from you guys. Take care.